Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered him, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Judeans. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So are you a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Grace and peace to you from the one who was, who is, and who is to come. I often get stuck at the beginning of a sermon. I don't know where to start. What will grab you, your attention and keep you, the listener, engaged for the next five to 10 minutes? I promise it won't be more than 10 minutes. <laughs> I have the same problem with the dreaded e-news opener or letters or emails or thank you notes. The hardest part for me is the beginning now, I was taught early on in elementary school, I think, to write, dear so-and-so, and then an opening sentence, but what? Dear friend, how are you doing? Boring. Dear parents of those registered for the youth gathering, blah, blah, blah. Dear auntie, thanks for the socks. I mean, it gets the job done, but... It doesn't really say much. But John, John who wrote the book of Revelation, which is really a letter written to the early Christians that was read aloud to the community, begins poetically. Grace and peace to you from the one who was, who is, and who is to come. Grace and peace to you people of God who trust Christ and live in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Grace and peace to you who are brokenhearted and grieving. Grace and peace to you who are anxious and living in fear. Grace and peace to you who are filled with hope for the future. Grace and peace to you from Christ who was and is, and who is to come. Past, present, future, Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the reign of Christ, the peace of Christ, has been, is, and will be with God's people always. Today is a festival of day that goes by a number of different names in various traditions the Sunday of Fulfillment, Christ the King, the Sunday before Advent, the Reign of Christ. It is the last Sunday of the church year. It is a time for us to look back, but it is also a time to look toward a future with hope. As we've been doing throughout all of our November, in our liturgy, in the scripture readings, and even in our generosity appeal. Past, present, future. The reign of Christ, the peace of Christ, be with you always. The images of our first two readings are dreams of a future where everything has come out all right. Daniel imagines an ancient one riding in the heavens. This mysterious figure receives dominion and glory and service. It is a kingdom without end. The book of Revelation pictures Christ as the royal ruler, the Alpha and the Omega, 
the beginning and the end, the first and the last. But this king is no king in the way we normally think. Everything is turned upside down and reversed and different from the norm. His rule is one of love. He does not have subjects, but he is a liberator. Defeat is victory. Loss is lifted high. Vulnerability is strength. Weakness is power. On this last Sunday of the year, we are given visions of a world redeemed. It is a hope that everything will be all right, that evil will be destroyed, that death always leads to resurrection, that true strength is not what we expect it to be. And yet, we read the newspapers or our news feeds on social media, we do not see the same vision, do we? Instead, we see a society where guns and violence are used to settle differences. We see politicians so hungry for power that corruption has consumed them. We see a justice system that doesn't work for everyone, especially not brown and black people. We see divisions grow deeper as COVID continues to plague our nation. And many of us are anxious and worried about the future. And some days, some days a future with hope seems out of reach. Perhaps it is a good day to hear from theologian Fred Rogers. He said, I am fairly convinced that the kingdom of God is for the brokenhearted. I'll say that again. I'm fairly convinced that the kingdom of God is for the brokenhearted. Mr. Rogers knew that what we also know on this day that the kingdom of God is not only a hope for the future, but it is also at hand right now. Another familiar theologian and writer, Thich Nhat Hanh, wrote, The kingdom of God is available to you in the here and now, but the question is whether you are available to the kingdom. Our practice is to make ourselves ready for the kingdom so that it can manifest in the here and the now. You don't need to die in order to enter the kingdom of heaven. In fact, you have to truly be alive in order to do so. Hmm. These words have taken on new importance and new meaning to me as I craft a funeral sermon for our beloved family friend, Heidi, who's dying from cancer. When she asked me months ago, earlier this summer, to preach at her funeral, which will happen sometime soon, she requested, demanded really, <laughs> that I not focus on heaven. She wants me to remind people that the kingdom of God is in the here and now, present for us in this very moment, that the kingdom of heaven is a way of being, not a destination. And so on Christ the King, Reign of Christ Sunday, we are reminded that we are invited to be active participants in Christ's kingdom now not go to a promised one in the future. UCC preacher Jennifer Lord says, we who follow Christ are, in our very bodies, the reign of Christ. There is an audacity in these words because we know we do not always manifest the reign of God. When we say or sing the Lord's Prayer, your kingdom come, your will be done, we don't ask for it to be so. We commit to being that kingdom in our lives. But she says, before we become overwhelmed at the task before us, we remember that the reign of God is initiated by the person of Jesus Christ. We don't take this journey alone. We serve as supporting characters to the one who is seated in glory, but who also loves us, frees us, 
and offers us grace and peace and makes us who we are created to be. As we labor, we can be confident that our future is filled with hope because it is informed by the past. We sing of Christ whose love and grace remain the same even as we arrive at this last Sunday of the church year, this day in which endings become beginnings. We bring our thanks for yesterdays, our thanks for this present hour, and our thanks for all that is yet to be. Christ is coming soon. We await the great day of the Lord that is still to come, and yet Christ is here in community, in service, in generosity, in word and music, in silence, in water, bread, and wine. And so, in just a few moments, we will sing boldly of Christ our King, the one who was, who is, and who is to come. We will sing together, you who walk each day beside us, sit in power at God's side. You who preach a way that's narrow, have a love that reaches wide. You, the everlasting instant, you who are, our death and life. May this Christ reign in our lives, not only on this feast day, but all of our yesterdays, today's, and tomorrow's too. Amen. <laughs>